Welcome back to A Plus Parents, everyone. And you know, if you if you're a homeschool family and you travel to conventions and you get to meet all the different vendors and you get to kind of get to know them, right? So I have to tell you that the first time that I met our guest today, Dale Gamash, uh, he has a Spanish program, but it was one of those times when you just meet somebody and you just know <laughs> we're gonna hang out, man. This guy is super cool. So, uh, so I want to introduce him to you today, and we <laughs> travel around, do conventions together, and uh, the same just, got the same bald head. We got the same bald head, <laughs> absolutely right. We're kind of from the same era, and uh, so uh, I, I'm about ten years older than Dale. Just kidding, actually, he's got me by a couple years right now, which is right. awesome. But what's really cool is that we both grew up inside of the public school system. So uh, Dale started teaching a few years before before I did. So he's been at this for over 35 years. Me, I'm just uh, right around the hit, just went over that 30 year mark of being an educator. And we had, you know, similar experience, right? So he had a chance to teach in the public school and then really found his passion in homeschooling. Uh, but some funny things about Dale. So, so, you know, so as a as a, you know, as a public school teacher, you know, I was, we were talking about, I was looking over things, right. And he was, a, I know he's a big golfer and I know he likes to play golf and he's a big baseball fan. And so he was a coach where he coached, where he coached uh, both, uh, both baseball and golf. But then I saw that he, he was a, uh, you know, a springboard <laughs> diving coach, right? And I said to Dale, I go, well, what do you know about diving? He says, nothing at all, right? Nothing so at all. Yeah, my coach said, the buddy of mine was coaching and we were hanging out all the time anyway, play golf together. And he said, Dale, I need a, I need a diving coach. And I said, Anderson, I don't know anything about diving. And he said, that's not what I said, Dale. I said, I need a diving coach he was training at another facility and he needed a body liability wise on the pool deck. But like I was telling you before I started coaching's coaching and most of it's mental anyway. And so I used to find all the gymnasts in the school that were cheerleaders or, you know, whatever they happened to be. And that's who I'd recruit because they already knew all the moves. I just had to teach them how to go off the board I wouldn't right. even go up on the high dive. You know, they, they all wanted to go off all the different levels and I, I'd, I'd stay on the low dive, but I right. wouldn't do any diving. I'd just jump in and do a can opener or cannonball or something. Well, I, yeah, that, that's a riot. Well, it, here's the funny. You think about uh, the idea of public school, right? And, you know, it's like the, they needed a body on the deck, right? So <laughs> it's kind of like, it kind of speaks to why we work in the industry we work in as opposed exactly. to what we do, right? So exactly. So, so, and for people, if you don't know Dale, Dale uh, has a complete Spanish program and it's called funclasse.com. So we'll put it in the show notes, but it's fun, like a uh, divertida uh, for the word fun, but F U N C L A S E e.com so uh they spell class a that way with the with the spanish uh spanish there so one uh, s one s that's right one, one s. s so you know and it, it's great because dale uh dale's done dale and i have done something that really um you know it, it it's uh, i'm going to use the word extraordinary my friend so i want you, okay. to, want you to, to hear that and really get the acknowledgement you know, i've been because, called strange before yeah that's okay well i get that too but <laughs> but i think for us you know we uh, we came into this world of doing online classes like the live online classes before it was cool you know yeah and, you know so it's like so you've been you've been at this uh, for about the same amount of time in terms of doing online classes like we've right. both been educators for so long but the last 10 years that we've been doing the live online classes we were chatting a little bit about the different platforms and you know yeah where we're right now and, well know. when i when i first started well robin and i created our elementary program and then we so many people like the first level, we had people pre-order level two, which gave us the money to buy it, to, to film it. And we did the same thing with level three. Well, people started saying, you need to make a DVD program for, for high school. And I said, no, if I'm going to teach high school, I have to hear them. I have to know they can speak. I have to know they have good pronunciation. If I'm going to sign off that they're my students and graduated from my class, you know, I need to know that they, but the technology really wasn't there yet. No. And finally, a kid who was one of my, who did all three levels and used to come and help me in the booth at the convention, his mom said, Dale, he's taking a Latin class live online. And she said, here's the platform. And so I went through that process. And that's why, again, a family suggested it to me. And that's how we started doing it. And I think this is our 
12th or 13th year of online classes, which it's got to be for in a lot of a lot of different math, I'm sure is really enhanced by the interaction and the why did you do that? You know, the hand goes up. Why did you do that? Because yeah. it matters. Yeah, it does. You know, the thing the something that I love as a teacher to be able to do things online is that, you know, when I ask a question, you know, I think back when I was a school, you know, public school teacher, right? And I'd ask a question, 30 kids in the class, five kids raise their hand, and you only get to talk to one, yeah. right? But when you're doing something online, everybody can share. And, you know, we we do, we set it up so that um, they're chatting, doing the chat version, but they can chat privately with the teacher so that they never, it's all, it's so safe. And it's like, they yeah. can actually say, well, I don't know that, or I do know that, or, yeah. is, you know, and sometimes phrasing a, a question in math is a little challenging because they're, you know, they have a question, but not really sure how to ask the question. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so we can really work with them, you know, in that online format. So, um, and you mentioned Robin, your wife. So uh, right. you've been married for, uh, how long have you been married? For 42 years this, this August. That is so, so great. Man. Congratulations. That's a long time. Long yeah. time. And homeschooled your daughter all the way from Correct. K through 12. You're a grandpa now. You got right. uh, you got grandsons, nine, six, and three, which is awesome. And I, I want to met, I know I met one of them at a convention. I right. think it was your, maybe your, the was oldest it? one. The oldest one. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. They'll probably be popping in here at some point during that. Oh, yeah. That's part of the homeschool experience. And that's another neat thing. You know, the little one we watch during the day while the other boys, they're in public school, but the other boys are at school. Well, each one of them, when they were that two, three year old, were spending a lot of time at the house. So while I was teaching, they were always jumping up on my, not always, but, you know, from time to time, jumping up right. on my lap or, or I got to take, I got to lay this one on the bed because he's got to take a nap or whatever. Right. But it's funny because I run into kids now that I taught back years ago and they'll say, how's Jensen or how's Ian? And they know him by name because wow. that's the homeschool experience. You know, the yeah. children, the younger brothers and sisters are part of the school. It's not, it's nothing foreign to them or offensive to them, or you're wasting right. my time to them for him to sit on my lap and teach for yeah. a couple of minutes because it only lasts 30 seconds and then he's ready right. to run out again that's so. right. yeah yeah there's some there's some the, the next new interesting thing to do is is, is coming right so that's right awesome. all right well you know i know that uh you know as a golfer like you're a uh, you know, big golf fan and as baseball coaching baseball that you're a baseball fan and you know and then a football fan as well so i gotta ask because here you are with your three grandsons and um i know you're a miami hurricanes fan right but growing up and you've been in florida uh you know, I think you moved to Florida a few years before I did. And I grew yeah. up in Florida as well. So how can you be a Yankees fan? And I can't believe, are you grooming your young grandsons to be Yankees fans as well? well and that, people always say, well, when my daughter was little, she homeschooled, but we still had an, a bedtime. You know, she had to be in bed a certain time. Well, when the Yankees were playing on TV, she could stay up. So she became a huge oh, yeah. Yankee fan. Right. And people said, well, you brainwashed her. I said, uh, okay, well, what, <laughs> what? either I'm going to brainwash her or someone else is going to brainwash her. So she right. knew at six years old, she knew all the players who that, you know, the best ones who was in the slump, all the above. In fact, bucket list thing, Robin, her and I got to go to the 1996 world series and watch Yankees and the Braves. So, but wow. yes, the oldest one is a huge baseball fan fanatic loves it every morning. First thing pop up. Can we watch some highlights from the game last night? Um, which Domingo Herman last night for the Yankees pitched a perfect game. So that was, wow. that was pretty, yeah, pretty cool stuff. But wow, anyway, the little one likes the Yankee, the middle one likes the Yankees, but he's more of a soccer fan which uh -huh. I don't care much about, but in the little one, he's only two or three. So he plays everything. I uh, got you. Okay, perfect. Now, wait a minute, but you now come in as a Spanish, per, Spanish teacher, right? You have to say football, not that you can't say football. Soccer, right? Yeah. Football. Football. <laughs> football. I'm not a football fan. I, our, our high school always had real good soccer teams gotcha. and, and uh, all my students, a lot of my students were in there and they'd say, senor, you coming to, we're, we're playing in the, regional finals tonight you come and i said well no to tell you the truth the guy next door painted his house so me and the wife are going to sit out back and watch the paint dry and <laughs> it'd be a little bit more exciting than a soccer match but oh i i used to go occasionally but only when i had to only right. when i had to gotcha. i'm, I'm gotcha. from the era when soccer wasn't a 
an issue. You know, I, I get it. Cause I, and when I travel to Europe and I'm there enough and, you know, and you know, everybody's like, Oh, you must love football. I said, I do American football, you know, <laughs> <laughs> not football, just right. football. Yeah. But they all know uh, the Peyton Manning Omaha. So we all, that's the thing we can always talk about. There you you go. Know, Omaha, and Omaha. I keep, and I keep up with soccer a little bit because a lot of my kids like soccer. And yeah. I, always, one of the things that I know enhances the classroom is talking about and enjoying the things that the kids enjoy doing. So even if it's me ragging on soccer, I keep up with it so that I have another thing that I can talk to them about. I love that. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, if, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be able to rag on something, you gotta be able, <laughs> to, be able to, to do it with style. And That's have it. That's it. That's awesome. All right. So let's take a look at you and what you're doing and what you provide for the homeschool world, which is just sure. really, really awesome. You know, when you look at, you know, teaching Spanish and my kids are both fluent in Spanish, but they grew up speaking Spanish. So it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't for them. It wasn't something that they were taught. It was just something that they they actually acquired as okay. you know as, as growing up. It was always we always spoke to them in two languages. And so you know when you look at and you think about homeschooling families and you know fulfilling the component for high school as a you know foreign language. I know I took my classes in high school, but I took them just because I had to take them. It wasn't right. I was right. Interested in learning. You, had, language, you needed it for college, right? Exactly. Right. So when you're, you know, for, for families and for parents and when they're, they're looking at the, the, you know, to, to look at a, a foreign language, how do you, how do you teach a language for a mom? Like, how do they teach languages that they don't know? You know, it's like, yeah. kind of like it, that. I just think that's gotta be challenging. Yeah, it, it, it is one of the most challenging. I mean, most moms and dads or one or the other know enough about math or English or social studies or history to teach their young children that language. But if you don't know, if you've never taken Spanish or a lot of people that have taken Spanish certainly don't feel competent to teach Spanish. What do you do? Well, um, that's why Robin and I really created our program, because, as I said, we were homeschooling and Robin kept going to the homeschool conventions and saying, Dale, there's nothing there because we were teaching we were teaching after school programs and we were teaching private, public and homeschool kids. And we had to, we were charging a pretty good amount of money and we had to make it fun for the kids because it's after school. So right. in order for the kids to want to come, they had to make, we had to make it fun in order for the parents to put the dollars down. We had to make it so the kids were learning. So we had to come up with ways that were fun and the kids were learning. And so, Robin kept coming into home and saying, Dale, there's nothing at the convention. Everything at that time, everything's a cassette, a little workbook. It's boring. So the Lord opened up a thousand doors and that's why we created our program. But nowadays, it even that was 1999, but even nowadays with the internet, it is a million times easier to actually be able to enhance it. You still have to have a program, but you can, a couple clicks and you can find cartoons in Spanish, movies in Spanish, songs in Spanish, kids songs in Spanish, church songs, and you know, all the things that enhance the learning experience. But um, I, I do workshops on that. And I, there's a few things that have to happen. One, it's got to be something that the mom and dad can either learn with the kids or don't need to have any background in language at all, because them a lot of them that they feel they'll mess the kids up because they don't have the skills to to do it so you have to have instruction but it has to be, one of the main things is it has to be age appropriate if you throw a rosetta stone at a seven-year-old kid you know rosetta stones own their own literature say um, fortune 500 companies uh, defense department, et cetera, et cetera, learn with our program. Well, it can either be for the defense department executive, or it can be for a seven-year-old. It cannot be for both. So age appropriateness is huge. Um, starting earlier, younger is better in the long run because phonologically they pick up the pronunciation and you having kids that learned it that way, um, the pronunciation is, is perfect when they, when they start young. But again, if you start with an adult program or something that's boring to the kids, then it's going to be almost worse than not starting them at all. Because just like with your little kids, 
You have to tell them things a million times. You have to hear it. They have to pronounce it over and over and over and over and over again in order to perfect it. Well, if it's something boring, they're not going to want to sit there and over and over and over and over and over and practice it and practice and practice. It. So it's got to be age appropriate and something that's fun. Oh, that's so great. You know, and it's funny because it's like to me, it's like, well, that sounds like math, you know, because it's exactly it's thing, right? well, yeah, math like and language are uh, people think in, foreign language and English. No math and foreign language because it's patterns you're right. trying to teach the kids how to find patterns in the numbers i'm teaching the kids how to find patterns in the word usage in the nouns in the verbs and things it's patterns that's right. all it is so it's same thing I, I clearly haven't made that distinction yet because my spanish is still uh, <laughs> we we mal right so it, <laughs> he had to practice dvt the four or five that's times right, before i, I practiced it before we got here like, okay, i know that word i can say it right yeah uh, you know and i and i do i use one of the apps now and you know but it's but it, i really agree it's like that's more an adult kind of uh it is vacation right and even then it's like i know a lot of words uh you know but to so i can communicate but I can't have a conversation. And th th I think that's the biggest thing. If I, you know, when I look at my own background, sure. and I've, been, I've been practicing for over 10 years. Yeah. You know, and it's well, like, we, I know lots with our element, work. with our high school pro, well, our elementary program starts the very first lesson starts with conversation and there's three levels, 15 lessons in each one, all 45 lessons, the kids are working on conversation, how to, how to converse. My high school kids, we work on conversation all the time. In fact, I, I generally have a separate conversation class that they can attend voluntarily that they all they do is talk. I hire a lady who comes in and all she does is take what I've been learning with the kids and converse. There's no grade. There's no recording. There's no, you know, homework. It's just kids learning how to talk. Wow. What's up, JK? Okay. That's awesome. What do you see kind of happens in, in the transition? So because sometimes kids get to high school and they have not taken any foreign language but all of a sudden now they've got that requirement to take a foreign language sure and i know for me as an adult it was you know the, the, the teaching old dog new tricks right and right. i must be a really really old dog because my new tricks are just not coming right <laughs> and, you know, when I, when I look at that right but but when you look at kids that are coming in and all of a sudden they're like oh my gosh i've got to get my you know my two years of high school uh you know foreign language in so when you look at the and I love that you start with conversations for the younger kids, but how does it, how does it work for like, what do you see like the best way to having a high school student come in and to start Spanish? What is, what is that like? Well, how, what do you recommend? Um, the key, the key with foreign languages, I'd said before, and by the way, the new term is world languages. They don't oh. want to say foreign because foreign has a bad yeah, connotation, that's but so, okay, good. All right. World okay. languages. I world got language. I say okay. foreign language, but the, okay, the, okay. the rest of the world says world language. Yeah, yeah. Um, foreign to me just means it's foreign. Like I, I don't get not, it. Right? That's, exactly. That's the, it's a different exactly. kind of foreign for me. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Language is language and teaching a foreign language is teaching a foreign language. It, it's all, all the same. But the neat part about it, when they when you get them as a, as early young adults, uh, I don't like the term teenager, young adults. When it's young adults, the key to me is that it's got to be live and interactive, because kids that age don't want to open their mouth, and if they don't think that they if they don't think that they are saying things correctly, then they really don't want to open their mouth. So right. I always talk to them uh, as if I'm a coach, because right off the bat, I tell them, Hey guys, you're going to make a million mistakes. And I don't mean figuratively a million mistakes. You're going to make a million mistakes. So you can either get uptight about it and have a thin skin and get upset and worried about it. Or would you close that door, please? <laughs> or you can, or you can laugh about it, have fun with it and get along and let everybody know that you're going to make a million mistakes. So I try to go from the coaching aspect. I tell the kids, for example, you're a baseball player, right? Yeah, I play baseball. I've been playing it for years. Okay. When the coach tells you something you're not doing, some little thing you're not doing correctly, is that something that you're going to get upset about? Or is that something that you're going to listen to coach and say, you know what? He knows a lot more than I do. If I do this, it's going to work. So I'm going to try it. Well, that's kind of what I do. That's why coaching comes in real handy when you're teaching i think yeah oh i love it well i'm thinking if you could take uh if you could take a if you could go out recruit find a group of gymnasts 
be their uh, springboard <laughs> diving coach and make it work, right? Yeah, there you go. Competitive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really get like, the world of coaching. Like it's really there. So, yeah. all right. So, you know, when I look at Spanish, right? Um, yeah, for me, it's just, it's hard. That's all I can say. It's like, it's just hard. And, you know, and, the, and it's like, you know, conjugating, you know, six different verb tenses. Right. And what, with what, and then it changes when you want right. to use present tense, sure. past tense, and all those things. And sure. you got to get into all these things. What makes it so hard? Why is it so hard for people? First and foremost, Spanish is probably the easiest language as a second language to learn. Okay. okay. English is one of the most difficult, if not the most difficult of all the languages. Why? Because English comes from about six or eight different languages. So there's a bunch of different rules, regulations, sounds. For example, in English, the letter A has six or seven sounds. Right. In Spanish, it's one. So the phonetic part of Spanish is so simple that that's one of the things I focus on right from the beginning is the sound system because the kids that way they have something they can stand on. And, you know, uh, I always do a thing, el burro sabe más que tú, which means the donkey knows more than you. And it's something that they teach their kids <laughs> from a young age that sounds because there's only five sounds. You want to sit here a minute? You can sit here a minute. Just put this thing down. Okay. Which, now, which, which grandson is this guy? This is Ian. Ian. Hello, Ian. Say, say hola. Hola. <laughs> Tell me your hola, name in Ian. Spanish. Say me llamo. Say me llamo. And what's your name? Ian. Me llamo Ian. And tu color favorito, what's your favorite color? Uh, en español. Uh, amarillo. Amarillo? Amarillo. Or verde? Uh, what's, what's one? Verde, right? Verde. Verde. Okay. Verde. Come on over here. Oh. All right. So, um, so yes, oh, the guy. sound system is huge. And if kids get, uh, it's like any other topic. If kids get success or feel success doing the small things, then they're going to do, they're going to be successful in the larger things. So as I'm starting out, I work a lot right off the bat on sound system. So a kid knows he's pronouncing things correctly. There's nothing. And I grew up not speaking Spanish. I'm like you, but God bless me. And I was always the best kid in the class. You know, my pronunciation was always the best and it literally was just a gift, but there's nothing better than when you do talk to a Spanish speaker that they say, man, your pronunciation is beautiful. Automatically, man, your, your confidence level goes up and language is all about confidence. So I want them confident right from the start that what they're saying is correctly said and that they can open their mouth and things come out the right way. And that's, that's kind of where I start. That's so great. Well, I mean, what a great place to start. And, you know, you, you, you know, I think about, uh, cause I get to interact with, uh, people that are doing the other way around. Spanish is their first language and English becomes their second language. There you go. And, you know, when I'm talking to them, it's really interesting to notice how, what I take for granted and what I know about the English exactly. language. Exactly. Because it's, you know, it's like, I can, I it's can. It's a very words. difficult language. Very Absolutely. difficult you know, language. Like, I can think very. of, I can think of words that, uh, the same word that has three different meanings is pronounced three different ways. And, you know, and it's like, but it's not like that when you're, when you're studying. Right. So really, really awesome. So hey, I, it, Dennis, is it, is it possible for you to hit pause for me real quick? It is, is that possible. Yeah. Just two seconds. Yep. So, you know, Dale, as we're, uh, you know, we're looking at, uh, you know, all these different things and, and, and seeing the different ways that people, you know, that, because what you said is so great about, you know, Spanish, is easier to learn as a second language than for a Spanish speaker trying to learn English as a second sure. language. Sure. English is hard. And I, you know, thank goodness I grew up in the English language. There you go. But I hear how often, you know, when people are sharing with me about they're trying to to learn English. And, you know, for them it's hard because yeah, absolutely you know, things, you know, so many different <laughs> you said rules and regulations. And, and with with Spanish, you were mentioning earlier about the endings of the verbs for the present tense, present tense, right. and all that. Well, that's fine, but almost all the verbs follow a real specific pattern. You do have a few irregular verbs, but most of them follow a very specific pattern. English within the same verb tense have millions of irregularities. Right. You know, so yeah. 
Uh, so it's it's it's, it's very, very difficult. Very, English is yeah. a difficult language to learn. I I agree. Wow. And I and I reinforce. That's one of the first things I tell kids. I want them to know that Spanish is going to be easy. And with my elementary program, I tell parents when I'm talking to them about our program, I'll say Spanish is easy. Spanish is fun. You got to make whatever you do. What classes did you have the? Did you learn the most? And did you enjoy the most when you were in high school? The ones you had fun in. I mean, it, 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 it's a no brainer. If yeah. it's boring, then they're not going to pay attention. So I try to keep it, try to keep it lighthearted and fun. Wow. That's awesome. Okay. So, you know, if somebody was going to say, so what's the program like? I, the first thing is it's going to be fun, right? And you're going to learn. Yeah. yeah. So what's it, what's it like, you know, for a young person that is getting started, what would it be like for them as they get started? Okay. Um, first of all, everybody has to, in, a, in our program, everybody have to have a headset and mic. Cameras are optional. Some kids like being on camera. Some kids would rather be dead than be on camera. Um, <laughs> right? But but it doesn't matter to me. But I have to. I hear every kid, every class. And again, that's for confidence, coaching, teaching, whatever way you want to put it. But I want them to. I want them to know that they know how to say things correctly. Um, but that's how they start. And we use a college textbook. Um, we use a college textbook because it's the best book I've ever taught out of. And Spanish one is Spanish one and Spanish two is Spanish two, no matter how you slice it. But the book I use is the best book out of 40 years that I've ever taught out of. And it's good for three years. So gotcha. homeschool families that they only have to buy one book for three years is huge. So that's the two reasons why I use a book. But we we don't generally get into the book until, I don't know, a month of oral stuff, practicing oral stuff, little basic conversations that they can use anywhere around, you know, just talking to people about themselves or their age or their, where they're from, things like that, that they can do that. Again, I'm trying to build confidence. Then we start with the textbook and people say, oh, I don't care about those conjugating those verbs and all that. Well, if you want to talk, you, you don't want to talk like a caveman, you know, it, so you have to know the different forms of the verbs. You have to know, it'd be like saying, I study and um, he study instead of he studied. And it, 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 it gets the point across, but again, you don't sound real intelligent when you do it that way. So I want them to feel good about what they're talking about and know that they know what they know what they know. Oh, I love it. Well, it's, it's great. It, I do talk like a caveman. So I, I know it. <laughs> my kids actually, they, they're like, dad, we're not even going to talk to you in English. I mean, it's, <laughs> we're just, we're just not going to go there. We, we know you're practicing and good luck with that. Right. But, <laughs> See, love. now you need, you need to cut off a little funding there or something there. Yeah, or, right? uh, cut off a little funding <laughs> if they're not helping the old man out speaking you know, Spanish. Like, it actually, it actually works out good. They're, they're like my supreme translators when we're traveling. There you go. That, hey, well, I, my wife speaks some Spanish and she's been real good with the younger ones with learning the stuff that they knew and all that and took it in school. And she types like 90 words a minute. OK, she was a secretary and, a, and worked for law offices. So she had to do a ton of typing. I'm the translator. She says I she said, well, Dale, you probably kind of need to learn how to type a little bit. I said, Robin, you type 90 words a minute. What would it benefit me if I worked at it a lot? I'd still only type 15 or 20 words a minute. Right. So why not? So the same thing goes with translated. Yeah. You know the basics of it, but why study it forever when I'm here? So that's right. kind of the way, you know, you're, you're right to use the kids for your translation. That's a and wise, so wise move. They still, they still can't figure out how I can go to the store do what I need to do at the store, come back, get exactly what I needed, what I was looking for. And even sometimes have to go to another store to get it and come back. And they still can't figure out how I do it without <laughs> with speaking Spanish the way I do, you know? So it's just, so communication, I, man, I, 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 I teach the kids to learn Absolutely. how to communicate. It's right. communication. Yeah. Communication. So that part's great. Okay. So look, you and I have been in this business for over 30 years and, you know, the last, uh, you know, the last 15 years that we've been in the world and you even a little longer in the homeschool world. Right. Uh, which for me is like where I found my passion. It's really where I can really unleash you mm -hmm. know, my own self-expression of being a teacher, right? For you, what's the best part about being a Spanish teacher? I think um, well, I have to tell you the truth. The, the best part about being a Spanish teacher is when you have an ex-student and it's always on one of those days when you say at 65 years old, why am I, why am I still doing this? 
and you get an email saying, Senor, I don't know if you remember me, have grandma do that. I don't know if you remember me, but I was in your Spanish three class. And I said, of course, I remember you, you were smiley or whoever it was that, that were in the class. And um, they say, well, I just want to tell you that we just went down to Costa Rica on a mission trip and my Spanish was the best. So they kind of put me in charge. We were able to go to, into the school, share the gospel with the kids and led some kids to the Lord. And actually, I emailing you because I'm getting ready to go be a missionary in Spain. Wow. How do you get better than that? I mean, there's 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 nothing ever, ever that that's what it is now. It always wasn't the way because I was in the public school and you don't have those kind of emails as much once in a while you do. Right. But um, that is it. But I think just having the kids be successful at doing something and in today's world, um, Spanish is like a no brainer. I wish I had a dollar for every kid that came back to me and said, then you are, you used to tell us to pay attention and it was going to help us someday. And I sure wish I would have, cause I could have gone down to X country and I could have had a better job. And I, I had a job at a promotion and that I could have go stay there, but I didn't know the language well enough. So, uh, all those kind of things that, that when you do have kids that take that extra step and become proficient in the language or become fluent in the language and, you know, whatever percent that is. Um, because if you don't, if you don't use it, it, it's like me and algebra three. Okay. Right. Or trigonometry. I have yeah. zero use for algebra three or trigonometry. So if I was to go back and look at an algebra three or trigonometry book, it would mean nothing to me. Same thing goes with language. Right. What they're going to remember is the concepts of it and the things that you can use within that. You'd learn something in it. Well, foreign language, if you live in America, you can use Spanish. I mean, it's right. not, it doesn't matter where you live in America, you can use Spanish. So that's kind of the, it's, it, you kind of have a captive audience in one that they need it for college to get into college, but two, you know, how many of these kids are going to be in jobs where they want to be a paramedic or they want to be a police officer, or they want to be a this or that. And if they know the language, they, they kind of write their own ticket. They get more money, they get, they get hired quicker and all the above. So I think the benefits of, of speaking Spanish are more uh, visible now than when, like when I was in school. Right. Oh, I couldn't agree more. It's, uh, it's awesome. It, it, and for me as well, just being able to travel places and just to know that I can maneuver you know you get so, by man you get yeah, yeah, by I get, I get by so which you're always going to have more fun somewhere if you can speak the language absolutely so that's awesome especially just going through customs it's like if i can go through customs and i can talk to the you know <laughs> talk, talk to the uh, the border patrol right and we can have a conversation and they appreciate it too you know and it's there like, you okay, go hey, now, welcome to the country, when right? you come <laughs> from Puerto, when you come go back and forth to puerto rico do you have to is it just a flight in or do you still have to do some kind of different entry and exit no, it's just a, a flight. Well, it depends where I'm coming from. Uh, so if I'm coming from outside of the U.S., then you go through customs. Right, right. I meant from Puerto Rico, back though. Back to the States? No, it's a, you know, driver's license. So, yeah, okay. there's, uh, you know, we're okay. still. We're all, That's we're what all I thought. Which works out People great. always think that, that, and I have to stress this to the kids all the time, that Puerto Rico is America. I mean, Absolutely. it is America. We're so, kind of here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. uh, yeah. So, which is cool. Yeah, it works out really, really great. All right. Well, you know, that just means you're going to have to come visit. That's all. So we're gonna have That's to it. Back. That's uh, it. Yeah, it's really good. Awesome, awesome. Well, Dale, okay, so we make sure everybody can find you. It's fun, class A.com. We'll put it in the show notes so that people okay. can check out where you are, sure. what you do, and they can find out all about you online. And uh, and you're going to be, you've got more conventions. Uh, so in, in, I don't think I got to share this in the beginning, but uh, if you if you travel around, you see the different conventions around, and, and Dale and I, or at least if I'm not there, one of our staff members are there, but, you know, but we always uh, have the opportunity as featured speakers to be there. So if you are at convention and you see Dale's name, you see Fun Class A, Dale Gamash, just go, definitely go in, check out. I'm going to be handing you a flyer. Yeah, there you go. Right? That's, right. that's right. That's right. Some yeah. people can just sit behind the desk. I, I can't do that. I got to yeah. be out hawking, man. I got to you know, be out that's, hawking. That's probably how we first met because I was probably is flying. probably I'm handed you a flyer. Like, What's this, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. so awesome. Uh, okay. well, yeah, well, we'll well, get thanks back for to having me. And yeah, we do absolutely. teach Spanish one, two, and three online. 
Okay, perfect. Oh, that's awesome. So very good. So yeah, please uh, check it out. It's a, a great, great, great program. And uh, and as you can tell, just by hanging out with us today, you're going to have fun. And there you go. Got to have fun, man. Got to have, have fun. Thanks for having well, me, Dennis. You bet. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in A Plus Parents, and we'll see you next time. Adios. Bye,